All right, the revs are up and that gate is down as they fire into turn number one. Stasic hole shot sliding through the first turn. Looks like we're going to see poking a nose out there. Looks like the 51 of Mark Finnis is alongside. And I think he has got that hole shot going down that second straightaway. Is that the 75 of Ferry trying to go for the lead? So here it is. Little Red Dog trying to make moves early as he peeks to the inside. They're getting ready to make their way towards the Ten Commandments for the first time. And it is the 75 of Evan Ferry. Oh, up and over the front of the motorcycle. He was hot on that front brake, almost flipping entirely over. Pretty remarkable save when all things are considered right there. It looks like he's still going to hold on to third spot. But it does give Finnis on the 51 machine the race lead. And he's going to have that clean air, which in these conditions, Chance, we know is always input, very oh, yeah. important. Absolutely. I mean, and two of the two of the top guys, Bomer and Dax, both got horrible starts. So this is opening up the door for Mark and even some other guys to fight for the championship, get a couple of moto wins. So, yeah, it's looking it's looking interesting right now. When you're Evan Ferry in that situation, you have a big moment like that after you're leading the race. What what do you do after that to regroup? What you big 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 save and uh, trying to recover with the heart rate yeah it's tough that you got a heart race bike you're you're out front you're only a couple corners in so you just want to go but man you just you got to recover really quick and just calm down and yeah pull it back together well the fans are going crazy along the side there as they root on mark finnis who's in the lead and kevin kelly up here said finnis almost laid it down coming out of storyland so he's trying to regroup and recover from that mistake of his own right Everybody kind of sloshing around on this first lap as Finesse jumps into view here. We're looking back a little bit further. That's the 24 machine moving up into the two spot by the looks of it. Brad West going around the sand corner might have a move up the inside, though. That is going to be the 67, I believe, of Cody Williams trying to slice and dice his way in there as well. And that is allowing Finnis to get away. Williams and West have gone back and forth a couple of times. As once again, we see the KTM slamming the door. Now another rider going to try to get around the Yamaha. So a rider goes quickly from trying to make a pass to keep from getting past. And yeah, that looks to be the 47 of Lux Turner. So just as you predicted, Chance, we're starting to see some yeah. guys that we didn't see in the first moto maybe do so hot shining through in these conditions. Yeah, absolutely. The mud opens up a door for a lot of people to run up front, especially in the mud. The start is really, really important. The track gets one lined, and there's only, a, there's only a few lines around the track to make passes. So, yeah, it's opened up the door for a lot of guys. So now as our riders are checking in, it looks like Julian Bomer in the ninth place spot and Dax Benick all the way back in 15th. So uh, those two riders got their work cut out for him early here in this second 250 Pro Sport. Yeah, well, Benick yesterday said he struggled a lot, or two days ago, I should say, in this moto, struggled a lot with finding lines. I think he's going to struggle a little bit more today with trying to find lines. But fortunately for him, this is going to be our longest motos of the day. It's got to have a lot of time to try to make up all these passes. 15th spot, though, you're going to be coming from a ways back. Yeah, it's it's tough, especially being this scenario. I mean, you're far back, and you you can see the guys out front that you need to be beating. So it's you're trying to get through the you're trying to get through the traffic, but in the mud, it's hard to it's hard to get going, and man, it's it's a tough situation to be in. Obviously, we've had a few other classes already hit the track here and kind of lay out some lines. From your experience racing here at the ranch, how different are those lines compared to what you guys maybe normally train on? Obviously, wear it in a little bit differently, right? Oh, yeah. The race lines are always way different than the practice lines, I feel like. I mean, practice days, you're trying to make good lines, a sweep open, cut back in. But on the out here, I mean, you have you have the you have a lot of different skill levels out here. 42 bikes on the track at one time. so. There's going to be a lot of different lines that you would never even think of forming on a practice track. So you you almost have to just kind of go with the flow, and yeah, you figure it out along the way. Chance, we are seeing some of the best amateur riders in the country right now flailing around, feet hanging off the pegs. Uh, are these guys just in a full sprint right now? Oh, I would I would think so. I mean, you see some of these guys in that six, seven, eight position, and man, they're they're hustling, trying to get some clear track. I mean, it's easy. It's the easiest time to make passes when they're all in a bunch. I mean, when everyone starts spreading out, it gets tough. But, I mean, Mark, Mark's looking kind of untouchable right now. He's starting to put a gap on Brad West, and, yeah, he's trying to make a breakaway while he can. Well, if you think back to our first 250 Pro Sport moto, Finnis came from a little ways back and passed a lot of the riders to get all the way to second. Oh, we got a rider down off the side of the track. That is Evan Ferry, by the looks of it, taking his helmet off and trying to get it off his head. At least it looks like to be the 75 machine. He's not checking in at our leaderboard right now, so... Yeah, bummer deal there for Evan Ferry as he tries to get the helmet off. Not sure if he had a hard fall or something else maybe happened, but clearly struggling a little bit right there. Yeah, something going on with Ferry's helmet. They're trying to get that buckle undone. 
Curious whether it could have been something where the, the helmet strap got pulled up super tight and almost got locked in. And that's tough luck. Evan Ferry had such a great start and then things quick, so quickly started going downhill. And there we go. We're getting that helmet off of Ferry. And yeah, nice. looks pretty bummed by that situation. Not sure what exactly happened. I mean, Chance usually it looks like he's maybe holding the side of his face or something. So have to imagine he probably landed yeah, maybe, on, the, on that helmet a little bit. Smacked his head a little bit. I mean, it's man, it's a tough situation. What I'm watching, boys, coming through. We got Julian Bomer and Daxton Benick together now in the uh, eighth, ninth, tenth position or so back in Storyland. And they were side by side heading into it. So that's going to be another one to watch. Remember, Bomer won the first photo of his class. Definitely not where he wants to be. And Bennett got around him as they come back out of Storyland. So that's going to be interesting. And it's not where Bennett wants to be either, obviously. He's won both of the open pro sport motos to start his week. And uh, another bad start in this 250 pro sport class. So he's got to get it figured out. What's going on in this class for Daxon Bennett hasn't been working for him just yet. And, and right now he's in a heated battle. We're looking at the 24 on your screen right there. That is still Brad West. And in, he is dealing with the pressure from Gavin Towers. So not sure where Lux Turner went. Looks like they both got around him and kind of dropped him. But Towers, he has got his eyes focused forward. He's trying to catch the 24 machine. I'm trying to see. That actually might be Trevin Nelson, who was another one of the Yamaha riders I expected to see towards the front. Nelson had a solid run yesterday. So that is. That was Gavin Towers. Nelson in the number five spot right now as Lux Turner makes a pass to move into fourth. Oh, Brad, Ooh. a little mistake there. Yeah, Brad sliding that rear end around the corner there. And oh, it looks, he's still in front of him. Looks like he was able to kind of use that outside line to keep just yeah, ahead there. Yeah, a little bit. I'm sure it's a little muddy off that inside roller when you land. So watching two Yamahas coming into the Ten Commandments, and look at how deep that rut is heading into the First Commandment. Uh, Chance, you can definitely tell us better than we can. Uh, what's, what's the technique going off of that first lip? I mean, it's tough. I mean, you're, you're sliding. You're trying to find the line. You don't want to get cross rutted So, I mean... You're trying to, trying to weigh your pegs, trying to get as much traction as you can, but you almost have to just feed on the pegs and just as much balance as possible, especially when you start doubling through those things in the ruts. I noticed our fourth place rider, Lux Turner, already without goggles. We still have 12 minutes of this motor to go, and he is starting to eat some roost. We also see Daxon Benick. He was seventh at the end of this lap. He's now up to six. He's gotten around Cody Williams. Bomer is trying to stick with him, but Daxon Benick on the move right now. A 2.05 lap time last time by was the fastest rider on the track, aside from our race leader, Finnis, who's still in that clean air out front pulling away. And another rider I saw with vision issues, Jaden Clough on the Kawasaki. He's got the roll-off streamers behind him already. Tough luck for the Kawasaki rider who had a fifth in Moto1, currently shown all the way back in 20th, so not a great start for the number three. Now we get a look at uh, Benick on our screen here. So he is, he's charging. He's trying to catch up to this little group of riders. We got battling it out just ahead of him. There you saw the 25 of Trevin Nelson. He is still right behind Turner. And Turner's doing everything he can to not let Nelson or perhaps even Bennett get by him because without those goggles, he is just going to be eating roost in those eyes without any goggles on. And here we go watching this Yamaha battle continue. Side by side as they're getting ready to come through the finish line. Towers, I think, is going to make the pass. And... Yep, he I believe he did it. close it off there. So Towers makes the pass, but already the 34 or the 24 trying to make another move up the inside. West isn't finished yet. Oh, and Towers goes to the outside. So West had to back out of the challenge, duck back to the inside. He's alongside. He's going to try to shut the door through the mechanics area. They crisscross lines again. Towers trying to square the corner off. And again, West with a little rear end slide. But Towers swings around that outside, just like we saw West use the last lap. And he is able to get into second place there, Chance. Yeah, Gavin taking a bad line in that, in that mechanics area. You want to protect them insides, especially when these guys are slicing and dicing like they are. So, but I mean, he, he pulled it back and got the pass made. So, yeah, good for him. Four to five passes in a matter of two turns as now we watch Gavin Towers put a couple of bike lanes between himself and West. And Chance, that's all it takes. One good drive through those Ten Commandments and you can open up a little bit of breathing room. Yeah, absolutely. One little mistake and it can ruin your that whole pass through there. So you, you got to make sure you get the first couple doubles clean and get through. And talking about a little mistake, we just saw West not getting the drive coming up and out of that corner. The rear end was spinning and now he's looking about half a second behind Towers. Yeah, Gavin's putting on a charge right now. I mean, he's got a he's got 12 second gap pretty much to to gap a uh, gap to Phineas. So I mean, I think if Gavin can keep up the pace, get a little closer. But man, Mark's still putting down some good times. 
Yeah, hopefully for Towers in this situation, finally out of, you know, chasing someone, a little bit of clean air might help him, like we've seen with Finnis getting out front, nobody in front of him, so you're able to choose your own lines, choose your own options, and not get stuck following somebody. We take a look here at Daxon Benick. I just saw he was almost, oh, and then the 24 of West just laid it down out of third spot, so here comes that entire train we were just watching. They're going by. West is going to slide back to sixth. Benick had almost gotten Trevin Nelson as we went into the commandments, and then he almost went down, went off the side of the track, was able to rejoin, still in sixth place, which is now obviously fifth place because we just lost West out of third. And Kellen, we say it all the time, style points given out here in this pro class. I'm not seeing a ton of it today. Just wide open, no feet, one hand, whatever it takes. These guys are rolling out here. We are in full send mode right now. These guys are doing everything they can to get any sort of clear track. Staying out of the mud. Oh, see, Gavin caught some of the slop right there. But in this sand sweeper, they're going clear to the berm, cutting across the mud. I mean, they're doing everything they can. Well, ch well, Chance, these guys didn't get a chance to race at all yesterday. Neither pro sport class went. So how do you feel going into a day like this after a full day off? I'm, I'd imagine the adrenaline yeah. is spiked, right? Yeah, I'm sure the adrenaline spiked, especially weighing around all day yesterday. I mean, I would feel like some of these guys are ready to go. I mean, they had a full rest day and should be ready to rip. Hey, guys, another name worth mentioning. Matty Jorgensen now moves into the seventh place spot. He was outside the top ten last time I saw him. So the number 14 trying to make moves, he's catching up to the back of the number 41. Yeah, another guy, Parker Ross, he also got a bad start, but looks like he's come through the pack finally in that eighth place spot, making it in the top ten, so looks like he's starting to make some passes. Wow, so Brad West had actually gotten back around Benick, then he just jumped off the track in the commandments the same way Benick had a lap before, and Benick went back by. We're still watching the 15 of Gavin Towers. First time in clean air, he does go a little bit faster than Finnis, not too much faster, though only about a half a second in the end, and then Finnis has got that 11-second lead with eight minutes to go. So I think Finnis now realizes the situation he's in, he might be managing a little bit. Yeah, and I'm sure it's, I mean, Finnis is clean, cleanest bike on the track right now, so looks like he's got some good lines going and I mean he's he's ran one I mean, he's been up out front the whole time so I'm sure he's I'm sure he's feeling good right now and uh, watching Gavin Towers kind of lone soldier out there at the moment nobody immediately in front or behind him uh, but we've got probably 40 different riders that want to try to change that as Lux Turner Trevin Nelson Brad West and the rest of this 250 Pro Sport try to take down Mark Finnis and Gavin Towers yeah, it seems like Benick has maybe closed back up onto that battle that we have for third place as Lux Turner is still trying to keep Trevin Nelson behind him. Just saw uh, Benick launching into the sand right behind these guys as there is our race leader, Mark Finnis. We have not looked at him too much out front. He is in cruise control a little bit here, 205.8, so he's kind of weaving through some lap traffic. He is looking really solid, though, on that 51 gas gas. Yeah, Finnis doing exactly what he was wanting to do, getting out front early and making the most of clean track and uh, probably got a whole lot more roll-offs or tear-offs or whatever than the rest of his competition, and he knows it as uh, just kind of tiptoeing his way through around it. And chancing conditions like these, we talked about, you got to find the balance between pushing hard and then riding too much on that edge because of one small mistake we've seen can bite you out here. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure these guys experience it. I mean, you can push a little too hard in the mud. I mean, you can lay the bike down. You almost have to be kind of on that cushion to where you're you're going hard but you can't go too hard you gotta have a lot of balance on the bike and get through these ruts and be smart so looks like looks like these guys are starting to settle into a pace but and Dax is doing everything he can not to follow these guys, staying out of the roost. Yeah, inside line into the commandments, and it looks like Benick was able to get around Nelson into fourth. He is all over Lux Turner for third place as they're working their way back towards Storyland. They're not too far behind Towers still, so Benick has got his eyes forward. I think he wants to try to get all the way to second, and he might have just made that pass on Turner as we head to Storyland. I'm pretty sure he did make the pass, and I'm pretty sure he was able to catch a glimpse of Towers right as he made his way into Storyland. So uh, Dax and Benick, the man on the move, right now the number 41 is headed towards the front so Dax and Benick like you said on that 41 machine and look at Trevin Nelson man he is still all over Lux Turner trying to get around the 47 he has been on him for the last four or five laps trying to make that pass and then Turner of course he might have to back off Benick here a little bit so he doesn't uh, get roosted in the face as those goggles have been off for a while and now look at that right away Nelson around the outside through that sand section able to get around Turner so Nelson saw Benick do exactly what he's been trying to do for the last few laps, get around Lux Turner, and he thought, okay, now it's really time to go. I got to wake it up and make this pass. Yeah, Nelson clearly able to see the number 41's headed towards the front, and he wants to link onto the back of him, see if he can just pace off the back of the star Yamaha. And uh, we know that Nelson's got what it takes to be on the podium as well. 
as they get ready to make their way through the finish line for another lap. Finish checking in with a 207, and that's consistent. Solid lap times. Chance, like you said, they're yeah. definitely settling into a race pace here. Yeah, especially Dax. I mean, he's, he's the fastest guy on the track by... He's 203, other guys are 206, 207, so Dax is moving right now. I mean, Nelson needs to lock on while he's, like, can still see Dax, but, yeah, Dax is, he's ripping right now. A little bit of an update on Julian Bomer, who was at one point with Dax and Benick. He has had some issues. He's dropped all the way down to 20th place, so not sure if we've seen a couple crashes or something like that out of Bomer, but not the moto he was expecting for our Moto 1 winner here today. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it looks like also... Maddie Jorgensen and Parker Ross looks like they're coming through the pack together. They've got a couple positions, each of them, so can't really see them on the track, but looks like, according to the timing, they're coming through together. All right, Daxon Benick is slowly but surely starting to reel in Gavin Towers for this two spot as they head to Storyland. You see Mark Finnis now in Storyland on our screen, working through some lap traffic. Unfortunately, rider down right there. But definitely looks like uh, Benick, I should say, starting to eat that gap down to Towers. And, and as you said, 203 last time by, he is our fastest rider on the track. And it's not really close either. He is absolutely moving. Right, absolutely. But the only thing Dax has against him is he only has four minutes left. So uh, it's, it's going to be tough. I mean, it, Mark's looking pretty solid right now. But it looks like Dax is going to need a big mistake from him and Gavin to, to get past him. Yeah, this is going to be huge for Finnis because, remember, he was second in the first moto. If he's able to win this moto, you, can, you factor in the fact that Benick was seventh in the first right. moto. It sets you up really well for that final moto to not need to win it to still win the title. Yeah, Finnis is going in with a 2-1 currently, so he's he's got this in command right now. And I think this is the battle on screen we're seeing for second place. Dax Benick has tracked down the number 15 at Gavin Towers, and he wants to make a move. Now we see Benick try to go to the inside. They almost come together. That was talk about a crisscross. As Benick, uh, Gavin Towers knows he's there now, if he didn't already. So now the question really for Towers is, can he pick his pace back up to what he was doing a little bit earlier on to match what Benick has been doing to get to him in the first place? So this guy's not able to get that triple right there. Uh, Chance, what are you yeah. seeing out of Dax and Benick? Is there any spot that he looks a little bit better right now? Yeah, I mean, Dax is, Dax is on attack mode right now. You can see Gavin's trying to... he's maybe looking like he's trying to survive a little bit, but also he's, he's focusing on what Dax is doing right now. So, I mean, Gavin needs to focus on going forward, and that's all Dax has been doing this whole mode. I mean, you can see Dax is switching up lines. He's not following. He's he's wide open. So, yeah, Gavin needs to get going forward. He's he's kind of in survival mode right now. And and much ahead. easier said than done. Focusing <laughs> forward when you've got the 41 banging on the door right there. Towers, I think that was a good line headed into the commandments. We'll see whether or not Bennett's got a hot line. He's able to triple out. And does he force the issue? There it is. I think this is going to be the pass for the lead. Standing up through the majority of that turn. Towers tries to remount a charge, but that's going to do it. Daxton Bennett takes over second. Yeah, Bennett with a nice move right there. I saw him a few laps in a row starting to bust that triple, leaving the commandments as he rolls in and 2-2-2-3 two, 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 all the way through there. And uh, that's the first rider I've seen busting that triple out in these conditions, Chance. That is yeah. really a big line. Yeah, I mean, looking at it right now, it's complete slop right now. Rods from left to right. So, yeah, if you can start getting some of those triples down and start getting some of the bigger jumps you can do when the track's drier, I mean, you're going to be putting a couple seconds down each lap. Two-lap card has gone out already, so we're about to see the white flag this time by as Mark Finnis rolls over the Rocky Mountain just in our camera view there. Now, if you're Gavin Towers right here and you see Bennett go by, what are you trying to do? What are you trying to see with him ahead of you now? Man, I would, it's, I mean, obviously it's easier said than done, but you need, to, you need to latch on and try to follow him through. I mean, obviously Dax, he knows Dax has come through the pack and is the fastest one, so he just needs to latch on, find some of the lines that Dax is doing, and yeah, go for it. Yeah, I think Towers has got to make sure he stays on this podium because uh, I, I, you guys, a Chance, I'm sure you can talk about this. He probably knows, hey, Dax didn't have the best first moto. So, yeah, he might be in front of me right now, but that's not who the championship fight is immediately. Uh, Dax getting eighth in moto one. Gavin uh, able to pull off a third there and Finesse trying to capitalize from a second in moto one to a first here in moto two. Yeah, and also, also Gavin needs to... Not make any, too, not make too many mistakes because he's, Nelson isn't very far back. So if Gavin wants any shot of this title, he needs to stay in third. Yeah, Trevor Nelson has just kind of quietly been hanging out in the background while those two started battling for second place. And now, like you say, the opportunity is knocking on this final lap to maybe make a little sneak attack on the last lap and kind of catch Gavin Towers napping and get on the podium. Yeah, I mean, these guys are these guys are going for it. It's it's tough in these conditions. Like you want to go as fast as you can, but. The mud's, the mud's a 
definitely a game changer. Now, of this group of riders, I'm not sure how well tuned you are with this current crop, but you know, is this what you expected to see from this group in terms of these conditions? Is is this looking like you know your favorite mud riders shining through here? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, there's a lot of guys that I feel like should be farther up front that had some bad starts, but I mean, I kind of figured Dax would be really strong and would be really strong right now. I mean, even Mark, Gavin. I mean, a lot of these guys had raced um, last year, so they were all. I mean, they were all good last year. I would assume they would be even better. So, yeah, they're all they're all kind of doing what I expected. All right, there is our leader, Mark Finnis, working the final lap, hanging off the back of that gas gas one final time. He's going to bring us over that Rocky Mountain. You can see Benick; he's still charging all the way to the flag here, trying to get it as close as possible. But Finesse had just enough of a gap, it looks like, to be able to cruise this thing home. Couple riders down in the. Uh, the sand sweeper, the Thor sand sweeper right here as Finesse goes by our window on the final lap. And uh, Mark Finesse looks like he's going to pick up this win, Zach. Yeah, no, Mark Finesse getting the job done as he makes his way towards the finish line for the final time. 250 Pro Sport Moto2 going to go to the number 51 of Mark Finesse getting the job done. And thought that was him coming towards the checker flag. I had it all timed out. But I was wrong. There is the clean number 51 coming across the line and grabbing the win. And chance that I feel like if you're somebody like Dax and Benick after that kind of start, you got to be satisfied with working all the way back to second. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm sure he's a little bit bummed because he saw the win right there. But man, starting that far back and getting up to being that close, I mean, you, that's something to be proud of, I'd say. Now you go back to the hauler after this one, Chance. You see Benick late in the moto. He's running 204s. He's going a lot faster. Uh, late in this race like we see here you know what is the debrief like after this just all about the start i'm assuming right yeah i mean it's his race was over at the start that's pretty much how it goes so i'm sure they're gonna go back and i'm sure they had some guys taking some videos and figure out what's going on so yeah i'm sure he's gonna go back and focus on them starts and yeah get it good for open pro all right, 250 Pro Sport Moto 2 wrapping up here. Here's your top 10. Mark Finnis takes the win from Daxton Bennett. Gavin Towers rounds out our podium. Trevin Nelson and Parker Ross inside the top five with Lux Turner, Matty Jorgensen, Avery Long, Cody Williams, and Noah Smerden getting up into the top 10 there on the last lap. Looks like Brad West, unfortunately, had a bad last lap. Not sure if he went down or not, but uh, fell out of the top 10 late after battling in the mix the whole time. And I think that's going to do it from up here down at the tower. I think we're going to send it down to Jason Wygant standing by with your podium. All right, let's get this show going. And this was so clutch. This might be the most coveted class of the week. Great in Moto1, even better in Moto2, taking a massive step toward trying to win maybe the most coveted championship you'll have this week in pro sport. So let's bring up the 51. And he earned it, man. He rode incredible in the dry and then even better here in the mud. All right, let's bring up the 51. Huge for Mark Finnis. They are going crazy down here, and that's what you want to see. I mean, this is a massive moto win. Look, you've always had speed. I know you're not afraid to jump. This year you're showing fitness. You're showing you can get it done in the mud. You're ready. Oh, yeah, dude. I said that it was raining, and it was rain, raining this morning. I was like, oh, this is going to be a fun time because I love playing in the mud. And I uh, <clears throat> did something special off the start that I can't tell you guys. <laughs> it worked. It worked. That was the first good start I got, and it was a whole shot. And then Fer Ferry passed me back pretty quick, and then he, like, nose-picked into the commandments, and it was just – I had a pretty big gap on like the first two laps and then I just like chilled like backed it down quite a bit. Probably shouldn't have done that because I kind of want to crush these guys' souls a little bit. But you know, a win is a win. It's still a gold. And uh, points wise, man, you get a big lead too. You got to feel good about that. Oh yeah, I'm the 2-1. I don't know what anyone else finished, but uh, I feel pretty good coming into the next moto. All right. Uh, who do you want to thank, Mark? Mom, my dad, KTM, uh, Gas Gas. <clears throat> Mark and Jeremy from AEO, Club MX, ev everyone from Club MX been really putting in the work down uh, in South Carolina. Brandon Haas, Hayden, Ross, Ben, everyone there. Big, big thank you to them. <clears throat> Fly Racing, Dunlop, FMF, Twisted Motors, and everyone else that backs me up, and especially the boys that came from uh, <laughs> Illinois to come watch me race. Mark Finnis, everybody. Wow. Not many podiums I can remember here at Loretta's where I can't hear myself. That's how fired up these people are. I want to bring up the second place finisher, and he earned that one, man, in the muddy conditions, had to make some passes, and uh, great line choices, man, to make those moves. Let's bring up our second place finisher. 
And still a shot at the title if things would have bounced the right way. All right, we're looking for our number two man. Well, this is quite a comeback here. I mean, way back out of the top 10 to make this thing happen. First moto wasn't what he wanted, I think, so points are still gonna be tough as far as winning the championship. This guy's getting cleaned up after a, a pretty gnarly mud race. This has definitely reached that time already, kind of early to get in this point where everything's sticking to the bikes and the riders. What a comeback. It's here for Dax Benick. Well, the one thing you don't want to do in these conditions is have to come through the pack, but that's what you had to do. Yeah, and we, uh, we weren't sure on the start. You know, it was tricky. Didn't have a great gate pick, and uh, I came out pretty, pretty buried, so I had to put my head down and charge. And uh, yeah, I descended the whole moto, and I felt really good. I cut the gap a lot, so uh, yeah, I'm happy with my riding. Moto one in this class was tough on you. What was the, the issue there? Because you've been great in every moto except that one this week. Yeah, I just had some arm, arm problems and uh, not great sleep. But yeah, uh, we had to rebound, and I um, feel like the best I felt on the bike was today. So uh, yeah, I'm ready for the next moto. You never know, Moto3 could still be in it. Who do you want to thank? Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, my dad, my whole family, uh, my mechanic, Morgan, Georgie, Swanee out here, Beeks, my agent, and uh, yeah, everyone, this whole Star Racing on my team, back home watching. Thank you very much, and uh, yeah, we're going to get it done. All right, there it is, Dax Bennett, second place. And looking for Gavin Towers, who takes third, and he made some passes as well to get there. Here comes Gavin. Had some great battling. Him and Brad West really going at it for a second early in this moto. He will end up in third. Let's hear it for Gavin Towers. You got any uh, Western PA mud races in your time? Yeah, but for the most part, we've been uh, on the West Coast for the last like two, uh, better part of the two years uh, since like I got on big bikes and uh, so. But you know, you never forget your roots. Uh, racing up at Steel City before it shut down at High Point. You know, I'm pretty sure the only weekend out of the year that those things ever or those tracks ever were dry was for the Pro Nationals. So, uh, so we got used to that. Um, pumped with that ride, but dang, I wish I would have held on to the second place just for, you know, that one extra point against Mark. But it is what it is. Uh, pressure's more going to be on him for this one. So sitting with a little bit three versus two po or, uh, six points. So see how it shakes out. Get a good start. Um, yeah, but those guys are running awesome. He got a good hole shot, got clean air, but uh, just just dug deep. I mean, that track is brutal. It's not everything's pretty pretty deep. It's, you can get through it pretty good, but you get to those ten commandments, and I swear you just lock up. So, but all in all, great ride. Another, we're back up on the podium, which is awesome. So, I just want the, uh, you know, we want the gold. So, but you know, another podium's good. Who do you want to thank, Gavin? I thank my, my sister Sydney, the whole NSA Yamaha team. Everybody over there, my mechanic, Carter, Dan, Jake, everybody over there. My trainer, Swanee, and uh, Jeannie, keep me fit. 100% uh, goggles, keeping the vision clear. Uh, Dunlop tires hooking up great. Uh, just everybody moves, parts unlimited. Monster, Monster Mike, can't thank them enough. Just, there's a whole village behind us, and I'm, I'm super stoked to uh, finish out the week strong. Gavin Towers.